high blood sugar is what causes obesity. So to lose weight, you must fully understand this concept. To help you understand it even further, let's go back to 1920 to learn more. The picture on the left is of a young girl about five years old who was born as a type one diabetic. Now type one diabetics, their bodies are unable to make insulin. So this was before man-made insulin was invented, the picture on the left. So without insulin, you can see that she is literally skin and bones. She's got no muscle. She's got no body fat. She was being fed countless calories every day by her parents, trying to get her to put on weight. But no matter how much she ate, she was not able to store fat or store muscle. However, fortunately for her, they invented insulin, and so about five months after she started injecting man-made insulin, you can see the picture on the right where now she looks like a normal, healthy young girl. She's got some muscle, she's got body fat. And so the difference of having insulin versus not having insulin reinforces the fact that insulin is the master storage hormone. So without it, we can't survive. That's why type 1 diabetics need to take insulin injections. But there's a dark side to insulin. So let's take a look at what happens if there's too much insulin in our system. When we're young and when we're healthy and we have normal insulin levels, our waist is going to be significantly less than half our height. However, as a result of the standard American diet and the elevated insulin that results becoming insulin resistant in many cases, now, by the time we're a teenager, our waist could now be a little bit more than half of our height. And as things continue and insulin gets to dangerous levels, by early to mid-20s, the waist can be now much more than half of our height. So you're probably wondering, why hasn't my doctor told me about the things that you've been sharing in this webinar? Well, here's the reality that most people face when they go to their regular family practitioners. You go in complaining that you're not able to lose weight. The doctor's response is that your blood sugar and your blood tests all look fine. And they give you the instruction to eat less and exercise more. A Couple years later, you go back in complaining that you still can't lose any weight. At this point, the doctor says, well, your sugar's up a little bit, but it's still normal. You must be eating too much. A Couple years more go by and you go in complaining that you're gaining weight. At this point, your blood sugar is to the point where you're now diabetic. So now the doctor can give you medication to help you. We've seen this time after time that people are undiagnosed with increasing blood sugar and it's only when it's so high that they're considered diabetic that the doctor intervenes because there is no medical intervention for prediabetes or insulin resistance. So it's important that you know your numbers so that you can know for yourself. Most people don't get their numbers. We really encourage you that you get yours. Write these numbers down so that you know what the different ranges are for healthy, for being insulin resistant, for being prediabetic, or for becoming diabetic. Because the further you are along this process, the harder it is to reverse your situation. Now, things are different if you happen to work with a doctor that focuses on functional medicine, which functional medicine doctors tend to focus more on prevention through lifestyle change rather than waiting to just diagnose a disease like a traditional doctor does. So in this particular case, the patient might go in saying that they can't seem to lose weight. The functional medicine doctor is measuring both their blood glucose level and their insulin level. So the doctor's response would be, Okay, I see why you can't lose weight. Your sugar is okay, but your insulin is starting to creep up. And we know that insulin is a storage hormone. A year later, the patient comes in and indicates that I've tried eating fewer calories, and the doctor intervenes by saying it's not about calories. It's certain foods that you've been eating that are making your insulin rise. Another year goes by, insulin has crept up even higher, blood sugar is going up, and now the doctor intervenes by saying you're pre-diabetic because both your sugar and your insulin are elevated. And at this point, the doctor would recommend the CDC's Diabetes Prevention Program. Unfortunately, many people respond by saying, I don't have time for that, I'm too busy. Well, what happens? A couple years later, you're now a serious diabetic as your insulin has gone way down and your sugar is way up. And at that point, you say, 
oh, maybe I should have joined that program that you recommended a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, the doctor's response at that point is, yes, but it's too late now. You need to be on several medications. Don't be that person that puts it off. These people are just like you. Picture yourself as one of them less than one year from now. If you're interested in participating in this program or if you have any other questions about what we have to offer, feel free to call or text 915-861-6758 or email info at trinityhealthcoaching.com. The educational information provided in this seminar is intended to be general in nature and is not a substitute for professional medical advice. The options offered are not a replacement for professional medical judgment. Individual medical advice should be obtained.